Hi, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to another plant video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the best plants to transfer to LECA. I have about 30 plants in LECA. They all seem to be doing very well for the majority. Um, so the ones that are doing the best are the ones I'm going to be sharing with you today. I did water propagate all of them, so that could be the reason why they have held up so well for this long, but nevertheless, they are doing very well. So if you are interested in seeing the best plants that you can transfer to LECA, just keep watching. The humidity in my hair. This is why I love winter. I'm sorry to ruin your summer vibe, but fall and winter, that's my shit. So the first plant I wanted to show you that is one of the best to have in LECA in my opinion is my Syngonium. My Syngonium Pink Illusion. When I first transferred her to LECA she only had two leaves. This is what her root system looks like. And to be honest guys, I do not flush my LECA. I think certain plants need flushing. If I don't have to do it, I'm not doing it. Unless I see the plant declining, I'm not flushing the LECA. This Syngonium she's kept in bright and direct light. Syngonium can be kept in any light, in my opinion. Um, my opinion. She's kind of next to a grow light in my living room, but Syngonium are lower light plants, and you can keep them in a lower light situation if you'd like. Um, I don't really let her water reservoir dry out. This is one of the jars that I drilled a hole in, but I don't really let her water reservoir dry out at all. Water's up to like about here. When Syngonium are in soil, they seem to like to stay consistently moist. So I try to mimic that when they're in LECA. I think I have another little Syngonium that I have that I propagated as well. It's another pink illusion, a little dying leaf on the back. <laughs> I propagated this little baby. Oh, I got my nails back on by the way. I also keep her in front of a humidifier, well around a humidifier because Syngonium love humidity as well. And she seems to be doing good. There's always leaves unfurling on this plant, like this for instance. Beautiful. And there's one here unfurling as well. Poke your eye out. Ugh. I'm sure you guys have seen all of my Monstera plenty of times if you watch my videos, but yes. Oh, this one's unfurling. Monstera Deliciosa do very, very well in LECA. As soon as I transferred my Monsteras to LECA, they took completely off. The root systems just expanded so quickly. I had to transfer the jars that they were in pretty fast, I would say, probably like a month or two within them being transferred to LECA. And I transferred them into these huge jars. I've transferred these since having my YouTube channel, which probably has been two months now. So in two months, this is how much the roots have taken over this huge jar. I keep my Monstera in the brightest part of my house during the day. At nighttime, they do have a grow light directly on them. It promotes fenestrations, which are the holes in the leaves. And who doesn't want holes in the leaves? I mean, I can appreciate a nice, juicy heart like this, but I love fenestrated leaves. I do let my Monstera and Leca dry out quite a bit. Like, this is a big jar and the water level is down here right now. Monstera also really love humidity. So they are kept close to a humidifier. I love when I wake up in the morning and I see little dew drops on the leaves. The only negative I would say about having your Monstera and LECA is that you probably are gonna have to repot them quite often. Once they get root bound, like you have to repot them as soon as possible. I wasn't aware of that because I was new to LECA when I first transferred my Monstera. So once they got root bound, I let them stay in there way too long and I started getting dying leaves. Ever since I transferred them to, I thought that was a bug. Ever since I transferred these to LECA, it's been shooting out new leaves, new growth. I think eventually I'll have to attach them to some kind of moss pole or something that I create, but for right now, they seem to be doing so well. These are my favorite plants in LECA. I have about five of them and they are taking over my house. I keep all of my Monstera in the living room. I just moved some of these plants in here for the video's purpose, but that one back there, he's my favorite. The next LECA loving plant I'm going to share with you are my Golden Pothos. Propagated them and transferred them to LECA. The reservoir will stay wet for about three weeks to a month, so I really don't look at these plants. Hence why the leaves are so dusty. I do like to keep them in brighter light just to encourage the variegation on the leaves. 
these literally have barely any variegation because they've been being kept in a lower light spot but i recently have moved them so i'm hoping that they get more variegated i also have this marble queen pothos that i've had in leca for a very long time it started off as a cutting with i think one leaf or two leaves and it's just taken off i love posting this plant because it's so pretty I keep it in a macrame in my bedroom window just to promote the variegation, which is this right here, all this pretty white. It's a pot though, so it's exactly like the other one I was just talking about. You literally don't have to mind this plant at all. Right here, I have a new leaf coming out. And you can tell it's variegated. I'm so excited. It's so cute. This humidity is just too much. I need to back up. Next plant I'm going to be sharing with you is my... I want to pour water out is my Hoya Obovada. This is literally one of my favorite plants because the leaves are just so freaking cute. I love anything small and round. I do let her water reservoir dry out um, quite a bit before I water her again. Not for too long because I don't want to risk losing leaves on this one. So, um, I do keep an eye on this plant just to make sure it doesn't get too, too low. It is a little low right now, so I will water her today. But other than that, I also keep her in a very bright area. In my experience, Hoya tend to like brighter light, also under the grow light as well. And that's also to promote um, variegation. This is a Hoya Obobata Splash. So all of those little specks you see on the leaves, that's the... Uh, splash another plant that i have in leca you guys have seen this before when i transferred it in another video i'll link all the videos that um these plants are seen in down below but this is my dumb cane that i transferred a while back she has gotten a lot taller not that much taller but taller enough in my opinion to say that she is doing well in leca there's always leaves unfurling in order to keep the variegation i do keep her in a brighter spot as well typically all of my plants that have a little bit of white in them or a little bit of color in them i like to keep them in a brighter area just to promote that color to stay um or encourage that color to stay so i did lose quite a bit of variegation on this plant when i first transferred her like these leaves down here but i recently moved her and it looks like the newer leaves are getting the variegation back so i'm very happy i don't really like to let these dry out that much because i remember when i had a bunch of dumb cane in soil as soon as they dried out leaves were dying left and right so i don't really like to let her dry out that much but i find with dumb cane you're bound to lose leaves anyway it's just one of those plants that you're gonna have to constantly prune the last plant I want to show you is my fiddle leaf fig. I think I showed you in one of my last videos. She's doing so well, and I think she's doing well enough to say that she loves Lekka. One sec. So here she is again. Little update on Miss Fiddle Leaf Fig. She's so tall. Like I can't believe there used to be leaves all along these stalks. But anyways, but this is the new leaf that came out right here. Nice and healthy. There's another one coming out. This is the new leaf that came out. They're all healthy. This little baby shoot's coming out. Right there. I can confidently say I think fiddle leaf figs do well in Lekka. This is a plant that I cut that baby fiddle leaf fig propagation off of. This little baby right here. You can't tell me fiddle leaf figs don't do good in Lekka. This is the cutest thing ever. Like, so cute. I think she needs to be flushed though, honestly. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some nasty stuff down there. That's like the only instance where I will flush Lekka if there's nasty stuff in it. I've seen white stuff in the rest of my Lekka jars. That's diatomaceous earth. Don't ask. I don't know why I did that. It smells weird or if it looks like it has some type of debris in the water, that's when my Lekka plants get flush. Which, when I say flush, I mean holding this under the sink, letting water run in. I usually hold my hand like this so the balls don't come out, let the water go in and go right out the hole for like, I don't know, 40 seconds. One more plant I forgot to mention. This is the plant that I was so excited about in my first YouTube video. It's like my Adansoniae. It was dying then and it wasn't even in Lekka, so I can't say that any of this damage is from Lekka. All I can say is Lekka has prevented it from actually dying. She must love her Lekka life. I'm just waiting for this plant to like, you know, get bigger and I'm not giving up on her. She's a monstera in Lekka. And I think Monstera do exceptionally well in Lekka. People ask how I know when to put water back into this pot. She doesn't need water yet. So that brings me to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until my next video, bye!